Hello everyone, this is a 1995 Toyota Land Cruiser 1FZFE. In today's video, I want to talk about the engine's anatomy. So if you guys are new to this engine, or if you just bought a Land Cruiser with this engine, and you're looking to find a particular part, or you want to locate where things are, um, check, that, check out this video. I've also made some videos in the past where I showed the 22RE, the 3.0 engine and seemed like a lot of people love watching those videos and it's always nice to see those videos because when i was new to these engines um i never seen any video where people just shows you the anatomy of the engines this is the 1fz fe um it runs from the 93 through the 97 but the 93 and the 94 they're slightly different with their um, AFM or the mass airflow, and they also have the air injection tube. So mine doesn't have that, so it's going to be slightly different if you have the 93 and the 94. 95 through 97, you guys should have the same setup as mine. First and foremost, there are a few things that's different with my engine, so let me point those out first so you guys don't get lost. I have removed my AC system, <laughs> so usually you have two AC hard lines that go here, and then down here is your AC compressor. So I don't have that. And then right here, this is the radiator. You usually have your AC condenser stuff right here too. I went ahead and removed my AC. That's just a personal preference, personal choice. And then I also relocated my windshield fluid bottle. It usually belong right here. Right here is where it goes. And I relocate it with the SLE kit, the SLE uh, relocation kit. It's a direct bolt on. You do have to extend the wipe, um, the wires for the motor, for the motor pump. And the reason people do that is they relocate it because they want to do a dual battery. You can put a second battery here. The other thing that's different with my engine is I went ahead and removed the EGR. So this is where the EGR would go on to. Usually it's right here and it blocks all the way down there. So if you haven't done any modification, you will have those three things that I just point out. Other than that, this thing is completely stock um, despite the tune up and stuff like that. So let's get right into it. Uh, we'll start from the passenger side. Uh, we have the windshield fluid bottle. Like I said, again, usually it doesn't belong here. We have your wiper, blow, uh, wiper motors. This is your motor for your wiper. If something's going on with your wipers, you can look right here. This is the cruise control. And then this wire here, this wire is your cruise control wire. So if you guys are having an issue, check that out. This is your main engine harness. And then it goes down to the ECU. And then behind this right here, that box right there, that is your diagnostic bo um, box. You can jump the wire if you're doing some tune-up. I also have a snorkel. So this goes to a snorkel. If you don't have a snorkel, <coughs> then this just goes to an outlet right here. This is your air cleaner. Air cleaner is held by three bolts, one, two, and three. And to open this, you just unloosen this and you can just pop these tab, one, <coughs> two, three, and then you can remove your air filter, service your air filter. Right here is your coolant bottle, coolant reservoir bottle. If you remove this, um, this coolant reservoir bottle is not bolted down. You can just lift it up and it goes into this little clip right here. And then you can access your headlight bolts, your headlight bulbs from behind it. This wire here, this wire goes right here to right here, right there. That's your oil pressure um, gauge sending unit. So if you guys aren't getting oil pressure reading on your gauge inside your cluster um, that might that might be broken or something might be wrong with the plug so you can check that out your intake tube <laughs> this is your maf maf some people call it afm airflow sensor if you're having issue with your vehicle um this is one of the things that could go bad but it it's real it really happens <laughs> and the next thing we have is the radiator itself the radiator itself <laughs> is held by <coughs> one bolt down here and then a nut right here, but the nut has to be accessed from this end. In order to do that, you have to remove the grill. And it's much easier since I have the AC condenser off now. So this is the radiator. You have the um, fan shroud. This is where your thermostat goes in. The radiator has three hoses. Your upper hose, your bottom hose, and then another hose right here. This one has a curve. And this one has more like a one curve, which is like a 45 right here. So you can't mix them up. They all go in one, one place. <laughs> so it goes into a thermostat. 
your exhaust manifold you have two one two they're split and these are heat shield gauge these things are pretty expensive you don't have these they run about 100 bucks each new you have a coolant line here this coolant line is the return line from your heater core so this connects to this rubber hose and coolant goes in here hot coolant and it comes back out so if you guys ever want to do like a coolant um, heater core flush and you want to do a reverse flush you want to shoot water through this hose and flush it out that way but if you want to flush it the regular way and you put water through that hose it comes this way so and it's also good to replace these two if you're doing replacement <laughs> this cable here is your cruise control cable we talked about that already this right here is your regular cable your just your uh, <coughs> throttle cable that goes to your foot pedal this cable here that's wrapped in heat shield is your transmission auto your auto transmission um, kick down cable i read a little bit about it but i don't fully understand it yet but um it gets i guess it controls the shifting points on your transmission so i never really bothered with that yet this wire here is a ground wire it just goes to the chassis and then goes onto the cylinder head i also didn't mention i uh, I've done a big three upgrade. So this wire here is just a grounding wire that goes to where the AC used to be. And this is grounded from the block to the chassis. You probably won't have that. We have your fan shroud. We have your clutch fan, which is this blue one. And then you have two belts that runs your water pump and your alternator. And then if you have the AC belt, if you still have your AC, you will have another belt that goes here to your AC compressor. So that's it right there. We'll move into the middle. Oil, this is where you fill your oil. Uh, typical oil is 530. You can run 1030 if you're in like a hotter climates or something like that. I usually just run 530. I might switch to 1030 to see if there's any difference, but I usually just run 530. This is one of your um, valve two ventilation. This is the PCV, the PCV right here. It's always good to replace this the ground mitt and these rubber hoses they always get hardened <laughs> and then this is the intake tube you can take this off one two and then this piece can come off you just gotta remove this throttle cable and this right here is a throttle body and then these hose um right here they've been capped off but they usually go to the egr this is where the egr would go into so if you were to delete the egr you have to block the intake manifold up here and then on the cylinder head on the bottom far back there's another block off right there. Make sure you guys watch my other video. I did a video about the 1FZ FE um, EGR delete. Right here is your TPS sensor, throttle position sensor. I've never messed with this. I've never tuned it before, so I don't know anything about tuning these guys. I would love to learn more about that in the future. And then <laughs> this is another, um, I don't know what this was. So some stuff I don't know. So if you guys want to point them out, you guys can, I believe this might be the IAC. And then we have a lot of breather. Right here is your fuel pressure regulator. So if you guys are having an issue with your fuels, uh, fuel or something like that, this is where the fuel pressure regulator, regulator is. It bolts onto the fuel rail. This is the fuel rails where it connects to your injectors and injector shoots into your center head. So you have a vacuum line here. And then this line here is a gas line. That's a gas line that goes down below there. This tube here goes here to here, and then this tube here goes from here to here, throttle the body. And then on the radiator, you have you also have a nipple. This nipple is very easy to break because a lot of people lean over it <coughs> to do like maintenance. And mine is actually broken, but it's being held up with like a quarter inch right now. So this hose <coughs> goes here to the top, to the top um, coolant passage. It's the same coolant passage where this rubber hole goes to. So this metal piece here. There's a metal nipple right there. So replace that. And this is aftermarket. This is the protector for this nipple I got on my eBay. We have the distributor. This is the cap. And then inside you have the rotor and then the distributor itself. Um, on the shaft of the distributor, there's an O-ring and that's known to leak. So if you guys are having leakage right here, like oil leak, you might want to pop your distributor out 
can replace that o-ring super cheap but if you guys are doing that make sure you know how to do that because you can't just pop the distributor out and plug it back in it has to go in a particular way and then once you do that you also have to make sure you set your timing so it's just not a simple bolt in bolt out make sure you do research on that these are ngk spark plug you can run um, ngk's or ngk is the only aftermarket spark plug that i trust if i wasn't running these i would go with toyota so that's it right there and then for the big three wire this is the other um negative wire that i have i have the negative wire ground wire from the engine block to the battery <coughs> we have distributor <coughs> power steering reservoir <coughs> this is your power steering it requires atf fluid so make sure you put the right atf fluid it says here and use dextron type atf fluid don't use power steering fluid You have the upper manifold. This is the upper manifold. There's a gasket that goes here. And then there's a gasket that goes here. On the gasket, when you get it, one of them has a circle right here. That belongs on this side. The other one has two circles. That belongs on that side. They go in one particular way. You cannot mix them up. And also, if you do still have your EGR, it's very common because the, the pipe that goes on the EGR from the here to the exhaust cylinder it gets really hot and it tends to burn this wire harness that's your main engine harness and when i still had my egr i wrapped this up with a uh, heat sh tape so make sure if you're going to keep your EG egr uh, make sure you take care of this wire, wire harness because if you mess it up <coughs> this is your main engine harness and this will cut power from your ecu through your whole engine so take care of that we have the dipstick you can use this to check your oil there's a ground wire here that goes down here to the chassis it part it connects with the igniter so this is your igniter you have one wire quote one coil that goes here to the distributor which gives power to all the other six there's also a ground wire right here this is your engine hook if you're pulling your engine one of your engine hook one here and then there's another engine hook on that side this is a ground wire that goes here down here as well so pretty simple <coughs> we have the battery negative post positive post the bracket right here and then if you remove your battery your battery tray is bolted down i think there's like at least five or four bolts that holds it once you open it you can see it you can remove this um, battery tray and then you can access this right here if you needed to adjust your delts on your alternator it's easy it's much more easier if you remove if you take the time to remove your battery and your battery tray and you can access over here if you guys are having issue with your land cruiser not starting check your fuses and then also check your feasible link this is a fusible link and if something ever blows up this link here is meant to burn and disconnect so that it, it's like a breaker it, it breaks apart so that um it protects your system so if you're having like a no start where when you turn on the keys and there's like no power at all check this fuse and mine had went out before and also if you're still good and you do a lot of road trip off-roading buy one or two as spare they cost less than 20 bucks and stick with toyotas so fusible link get those as spare these are are as important as having regular fuses <laughs> this right here <coughs> is the evap I'm not very familiar how the evap or the evap is i'm not familiar how it works but the whole concept is that there's fumes the gasoline fumes from the gas tank comes in and then i guess it gets filtered and then it goes in and gets burned that's the concept but then again there's more stuff like that you have all the fuse box right here this is your fuse box your and again if you're having a no story issue you, your efi fuse you always want to check that your efi fuse if that's blown up then you gotta replace that that's a relay and then all your other stuff, horn, fan, head, um, ABS. If you guys are having an issue with your ABS, that's it right here. Or if you want to deactivate your ABS, um, the cheap way is just to unplug this. And I did that the other day because I was troubleshooting some stuff. But if you unplug this, you won't have no ABS and also the ABS light will come on. And then also there's another 15 amp fuse right here. Like I said, if you guys, have a no, if you guys are having no start issue, make sure you guys check those out. So this is your fuse box. And you also have another fuse box in the lower kick panel on the driver's side. This hose right here is a breather hose for the front axle. <coughs> I might extend this longer in the future. 
uh, original originally this hose is not that long if you had the stock one usually it goes up to just the steering arm so that's the igniter <coughs> and then this control unit right here this is the whole ABS system so it's a big unit I am not familiar how it works I'm not familiar how the line works and all but this is the ABS unit um, this wire here this wire is just an aftermarket wire that controls my LED ditch light so you wouldn't have this wire and then also same thing with this relay this is for my LED lights right here ditch light <coughs> and then you have a few relays back over here I'm not too sure what they are but if you read them it tells you and again this is your ABS system right here and then access to your top bolts master cylinder brake booster and then this is your um, <coughs> brake booster line it goes from the brake booster into the plenum so make sure you have this this big hose here is the heater core hose this is the inlet so what i did is i did a bypass i went straight from the bottom which is the bottom of the cylinder head coolant comes out from the cylinder head <coughs> and then it goes right into the heater core if you don't have this then what you have is the um pesky heater hose which is like a two inch hose that comes out from the cylinder head and then goes into a metal tube and the metal tube connects into another hose that goes in there so i did the bypass it's just simpler for me uh don't do it unless you understand how it works so oil dipstick right here this right here is your transmission dipstick you can check your transmission fluid stuff like that whenever you're checking your transmission fluid you also want to make sure you check it when the engine is running so keep it running on idle it's not like how you check it when the engine's off with the oil and also if you need to fill your transmission fluid you got to get a long funnel and this is where you fill that too so there's no there's no fill hole like this guy here you fill from the dipstick hole so we have that <coughs> and then this right here if you have the EGR um, you have a this is your EGR temp sensor mine is down here and mine has been modified <laughs> So what I do is that you, if you had the EGR delete, you cut it and then at the end of those two wires, you splice it with a resistor and then you just plug it back in right here. So pretty simple. And again, watch my EGR delete video if you guys have more question on that. Um, there's a bunch of vacuum hoses lying down here under this plenum. They all control the EVAP and then some of them also control the EGR delete, uh, the EGR right here. Right under the lower intake manifold, that's where the fuel filter is. You have fuel line going in on the left, and then on the right side, you got fuel going out into the fuel rails. And then right below the power steering fluid, you have the oil filter. Right there. That's the oil filter. I stick with Toyota because it's like six, eight dollars. And then if you were to remove your lower tire, um, right down there, that's where your starter is. So that piece, that's your starter. So if you're having issue with your vehicle not starting, um, you can do the old method where you hit it with a hammer or something, and that might get you by. But then that's where your start is. And to access that, it's easier if you jack up the vehicle, remove the front tire, and then you can access that. And also, if you want to access the pesky heater hose that I talk about, you have to remove the front tire jack it up unbolt the transmission um, stick and then you can access the pesky heater hose it's not that hard actually so besides all of that that's kind of pretty much all your most important things i might have missed a few things i might have missed a few hoses but for the most part i wanted to mention most of the main things that you will come in contact with you have your fuel injectors and stuff like that and again if you want to access your fuel injectors or stuff like that you have to remove the upper plenum upper plenum or upper intake remove the throttle body and go from there if you want to access just the valve cover let's say you want to do the valve cover replacement or you want to access your spark plug um, you can just remove the throttle body the throttle body connects to the upper intake but if you want to go die uh, if you want to deep dive into here then you have to remove the upper so and like i said in the past videos when i was doing my head gasket um the upper connects to the lower lower plenum but the bolts you can see how the bolts they come from the bottom up which makes it very hard to 
access because you have to go from the bottom and this side is easy but then the hard part is over here you have a bolt a nut nut and then a long bolt down there so have fun doing it but once you guys start doing it you guys will uh, know how it works so this is the one fz fe engine anemone uh if i miss anything let me know in the comment section but for the most part those are all the main things that i can think of right now you have your crank right there right there's your crank and then right there's your timing when you're doing your timing and stuff like that oh and then also this piece here that's your oil pump right there so if you have a oil pump leak um, behind that there's a rubber o-ring that goes on the housing and that's very common to leak as well so you might want to replace that and again i recently just did my head gasket overhaul so i replaced my timing chain fresh top end build up so it's completely leak free from the top end and that's pretty much it for the one fz fe if you guys got any questions let me know in the comment section below and i hope you guys find this video informative and helpful